Hey everyone, welcome back to my music production basics series. Now in previous videos, we've gone over a lot of tools. We've gone over compressors, limiters, how to use the DAW. These are all just uh, tools and plugins which help us change the sound. Today we're going to be going over MIDI, which is going to be sort of the source of your sound. So MIDI is a file type. It's used as a sort of notation as well as a method for putting notes into instruments and having them play back as uh, audio. Just for example here, I've got a piano instrument selected. So this is a software instrument. If I'm in Logic, I can go new software instrument. They've got a bunch of presets here. Um, so just, I've got my piano all set up. I can play notes and they come through. So a MIDI note is going to have three important parameters. So let's go ahead and record some MIDI And let's go ahead and learn about each of these parameters. So here you can see our MIDI area. So I'm gonna hit A to close our automation region. And what we've got here is something called the piano roll. So we usually read and program MIDI by, MIDI by looking at a piano roll. Um, the first parameter is pitch. And so if we hover over this little bar here, we can see pitch and velocity. So pitch is gonna be where on the piano our note falls, or more accurately, what note it uh, was triggered. So the sample here can be anything we want. Because I'm on a piano instrument, if we hit this uh, A1 here, it's going to play the note A1 on a piano. Now, if I had a sampler instrument, let's say a drum kit, which we'll go over later in the video, and I set uh, this A1 to be a kick drum, then in that case, A1 is going to play that kick sample. So the next parameter uh, is the length. We've got a number of bars. This is a grid. It's also sometimes called the grid, right? If you want to say time something to the grid, it's talking about this. So the length of these bars in seconds depends on the beats per minute or the tempo of your track. So if we turn this down, these bars are going to last a lot longer. So let's go to a really slow tempo. And it's very slowly moving along. If we go very fast, we move a lot faster. So the length is going to be how many bars the note lasts for. However, note that if a sample, for, uh, such as like the kick, for example, is particularly long or short, the length of that MIDI note um, is only going to be how long the trigger for that sample was pressed. So for most instruments, this is going to depend on the envelope of that sound. So on this piano, if we hold the note, there's a little bit of a, t a decay just in the way that this piano was synthesized. However, it's going to keep holding that sound for as long as we want. If we're on a synthesizer with no decay, it's going to last for as long as we hold the note for. If we are going based on a sample, so it's just triggering that kick, I can hold it for as long as I want, but it's only gonna play that kick. It's not going to stretch it out just from the MIDI. The third and final parameter of MIDI is our velocity. So this is sort of how hard you hit the note. So again, let's take our piano. If I really slam on this uh, note, I'm getting a much higher velocity than if I play it quietly. So let's just uh, do another recording here. Oops, let's turn our tempo back down. And let's do a really high velocity, so I'm really hitting my controller hard and a really soft one. Now in Logic, we can actually see that how hard we hit it is going to change the color. So this just makes it really easy, really red stuff. You struck very hard, and so the velocity is very high, whereas more green slash blue is very low. Velocity ranges from zero to 127, excuse me, one to 127. And we can also change it uh, on a note by note basis. So I can take this note. We could change the velocity. It gets very silent. You can't even hear it when it's very low. So 
So those are all the different parameters. So now let's go over a couple of ways that you can program or play MIDI. The way I've been doing it so far is I've been using a MIDI controller. So this is an Akai MPK Mini. It's one of the cheapest options on the market. I plug it in, set it up in Logic, and I can use it to enter notes. Now, another option, you've also got little beat pads. Um, if you are using Logic, you can use Command K and open up musical typing. You can now use your keyboard as a MIDI controller. Anything can be a MIDI controller. It, you just have to tell Logic to use it as one, and it will interpret these button presses as certain pitches. So with musical typing, we've got our A key tied to a C. I can go up or down octaves to change which octave we're in. So if we're in C3, that's an octave above C2. So right now I'm typing on my keyboard. So let's go ahead and record using our keyboard. It's clashing with the stuff we've already recorded, but I'm just showing that it went ahead and drew in the notes. Now, another cool thing about MIDI is we don't have to actually record it live. We can go into our piano roll, delete everything, and start to draw stuff in. So in Logic, by default, um, we've got our pencil as our command click. So if I hold command and click, we can actually begin to draw in our own notes. Let's uh, make the velocities higher so that we can hear them. We can drag them up and down. We can copy and paste. And what's also cool is we can take the MIDI regions and put them on different instruments. So now let's play with a synthesizer. Let's go to a new software instrument. Um, I would normally go with Serum, but let's just use some stock stuff. So let's do an Alchemy instrument. Um, go ahead and hit. Go ahead and hit this I to bring up our channel strip, and open up Alchemy. And let's choose a sound. Let's do a pad since we want to play a lot of notes at the same time. This one sounds nice. Let's bump up the volume a bit. And now we can take our MIDI. I'm going to alt click and drag it down to copy it. Let's mute our piano. What's happening is it's taking this MIDI and reading it and playing it through the synth. So, so far we've gone over um, a couple different ways to input. We can play it on a MIDI controller, we can use our keyboard, or we can just paint it in. Another thing you can do, let's mute our pad, go back to our piano. Um, in Logic we've got something called the brush tool. Now here let's also take this as an opportunity to talk about time quantize. So before I get into the brush tool, I'm going to delete everything. Let's do a recording. I played a bunch of random notes, and you can see these are not perfectly lined up. So quantization is going to line this up on the grid. So you've got time quantization and pitch quantization. Generally with a MIDI instrument, it's already going to be perfectly pitched. You can also pitch quantize vocals, but that's a whole other thing. Here we're only going to be talking about time quantization. So if I select all of these notes, let's say I want my notes to line up only on every 16th note, so 1 16th of a measure. If we take this bar and divide it by 16, that'll be each of these little lines. We can zoom in or out to change the scale of our kind of grid here. Um, but it's all going to be based on how long a bar is. So let's go ahead and hit Q. And it's going to snap everything to the grid. So Command Z. Let's uh, zoom in a bit more so you can see that better. And you can also do this in Logic by hitting the Q key on the keyboard. Command A. And everything snaps into place. 
Now everything is nicely synced and in time. Now, also using this uh, kind of quantized thing, here's where we can use the brush tool and we can draw in notes. Bump up the velocity of these. Beautiful music, we're making art here. Uh, so that's another input method. I tend to use the brush tool almost exclusively on drum kits with hi-hats. So let's take a look at how um, some percussion and sampled MIDI works. Uh, let's bring in an empty software instrument MIDI track. Let's go for a drum kit. We'll just pick one. Now, because this is a built-in drum kit, everything's nicely labeled. I can see that C1's a kick. If I play it on my MIDI controller, we can see what I'm hitting. Let's go ahead and just kind of... Let's go ahead and record a little drum track. I'm going to mute this annoying little piano melody. All right, so just a quick little quick and snare pattern. I'm gonna command A, hit Q to quantize. Now here, um, we can see what I was talking about earlier where even though this one's really short and this one's long, this one's short, this one's long, the kick is still playing the full sample. So the length parameter is a bit less important for sampler MIDI stuff. And those are all the basics. So I went over um, a piano, a synth, a drum kit. Uh, we talked about the three parameters of MIDI, which are pitch or the trigger note, length, and velocity, which you can think of as uh, sort of an individual volume variable for each MIDI note. Uh, we, looked, we went a little bit over how to input that. Let's finally wrap up with talking about editing. So again, we can drag around our samples. We can increase or decrease the length. We can change the velocity. So let's say you record something, you want to change it around, move it around a little bit. That's all very easy. And that's about all you need to know. MIDI has a pretty long history with, with the advent of digital instruments and synthesizers. Next to me, I've got my Casio. This can do MIDI output. Um, it can also... Uh, take MIDI in and play it and sequence it. It's a universal file type for digital instruments. I hope this was helpful. I encourage you all to open up your DAW and start playing around and using these instruments and starting to write stuff and play around with melodies and chords. Practice is really going to make perfect. So I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, be sure to leave a thumbs up if you thought the video was helpful. Check out the other videos in the series if you haven't already. And you're soon going to be on your way to making amazing music. And I can't wait to hear it. Have a wonderful evening, morning, night, whenever you may be watching this, and I'll see you next time.